Today, everybody, I am proud to have in my hands the pimp. Yes, this fruit is actually called pimp, and this is a very, very important fruit because without the pimp, we would not have the common tomato that we eat today. This is the ancestor of these. So yes, the pimp is a pimp daddy. How this became this is through human selection. A very, very long time ago, people took this fruit from what I believe is South America up to Southern Mexico. And in Southern Mexico, or what is today Southern Mexico, in this part of the world, people domesticated this. It is not known just how long ago people started domesticating tomatoes. However, there is evidence that goes back to 500 BC. So it's at least that long. When I say that these have changed due to human selection, what that basically means is that people grew the plant of this. And then when a plant happened to have larger fruit to it or more plentiful fruit or had other sorts of characteristics that they liked, they would replant the seeds of that particular plant to try to get those characteristics to pass on to another generation. They would do that and they would hybridize them together. So they would take plants that had characteristics that they liked and they would cross pollinate them. So the plants that would be produced by that hybridization would have characteristics of both plants. By doing this over a long period of time, something that is the size of a pea like this could actually turn into something that is bigger than an apple. It uh, has changed a lot over the years, so much so that this and this are now considered to be different species. Pimp does have a great name, but the reason why it has a great name is not because he is a pimp daddy, which we know is true, but because the pimp has the species name Solanum pimpinelli folium. Fun to say. The common tomato is Solanum lycopersicum. So these are different species, however, they share a lot of the same genetics. I mean, this became this. So because of that, you can actually take this and this and breed them together. You know what I'm talking about. The fact that these can hybridize together is a very good thing because although the common tomatoes that we have today are bigger, there are some negatives to the plants that we have today. Over time, tomatoes have become more vulnerable. They are more vulnerable to weather and they're more vulnerable to certain plant diseases. Solanum pimpinelli folium is a tough mother. This guy can resist harsh weather, and it can resist a lot of plant diseases that this guy can't. So today, tomato breeders are using this fruit to add some more of the resilience back into the common tomatoes that we get at the supermarket, which is great. What I wonder, though, is about flavor. Maybe we have flown too close to the sun because if you've gone to a supermarket recently and bought a tomato, you may notice that they taste kind of like toilet paper. So maybe we have valued productivity a little bit too much and got away from the flavor of this thing. I don't know. We're going to find out in a second. But before I try this, I want to give a big thank you to Brian over at RaindanceSeeds.com. He sent this to me and he's sent me a lot of cool things in the past. So if you are somebody who grows plants, head over to RaindanceSeeds.com to see what Brian has for sale today. Okay, let's try it. They're really good. Oh, that's nice. They're sweet. They're savory. I mean, they taste like a tomato. They don't taste too different than a tomato, but they're a nice, powerful tomato. The sweetness on this is higher, and the tartness is higher than a regular tomato. It's maybe like, not like a lot, but like one point up. I'd say, you know, regular tomato is like a three on sweetness and like a one on tartness, like standard supermarket tomato, like vine tomato or beefsteak tomato. Um, these are more like a four out of 10 on sweetness and a two out of 10 on tartness. So let's do a little comparison uh, just for the fun of it.
This has no flavor to it. It's just like eating soggy paper. Oh. <laughs> Although these are the size of a pea, they have more flavor than the entire tomato that I have in my hand here. So yeah, we have flown a little too close to the sun, at least as far as supermarket tomatoes go. Uh, I don't want to totally trash talk tomatoes because there are good tomatoes out there, but generally they're like heirloom tomatoes. I'd say that the pimp is more like an heirloom tomato, only it is very, very tiny. The flavor is definitely a positive to this, but uh, there is a negative that I haven't mentioned yet. The skin on this is very tough. So when I bite into this, the skin doesn't fall apart. It's like chewing on a um, piece of plastic. In the past, I had something called a Galapagos tomato. That was, I believe, another wild species of tomato, and those had uh, the same sort of deal. When you bit into them, the flavor was good, but the skin on the outside didn't really break down. It's a bit of a negative, but not so bad because they are quite small. So uh, I can see practicality in this species, just how it is. You could take these and put them on a salad or something, or put them on top of like, a, like an hors d'oeuvre. That would be amazing. And because they are small, even though they do kind of have this tough skin, it's easy enough to swallow it. You don't have to break it down. You know, if these were like big and had a tough skin on the outside, you would probably want to peel them or something to get rid of that, because it is, it is kind of tough. But when it's this size, it doesn't really matter so much. So um, I think that's about it. The Pimp is so interesting. I think this is just beyond fascinating that humans, over the course of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years, they have taken something like this and changed it into this. And that is so cool. Humans have done a lot with plants over time. And in trying this guy right here, it is tasting a piece of history. It's tasting where this has come from. And um, although this is better in a lot of ways, you know, bigger, more productive, uh, there's also a lot that our elders can teach us still. This one does actually have a better flavor than a lot of the things we have at the market today. So uh, very, very cool. Very, very cool experience to get a chance to try this. Thank you once again to RaindanceSeeds.com for sending this to me. And thank you, everybody, for watching. I would like to give a big thank you to Smarter Every Day, Bill T, and Joseph McCorkle. They are mega patrons on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I keep this channel going. It is a huge help, so thank you. And to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can support the channel and get some really cool bonuses in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos, there's over a hundred of those. Uh, there's even a level where I will send you things in the mail. You gotta check it out. So check out the link in the description below.